Hi, Megan Setti here. I'm going to take you through a version of a restorative yoga pose. Plow pose is a pose that you normally put a lot of weight on your upper back, your cervical spine, and your shoulders. And for that reason, it's not always safe, um, especially if you have any neck injuries. Um, but also, it can just put a lot of pressure on a part of your body that we often spend leaned over in this position anyways. And plow pose can be quite difficult to get into if you have tight hips, um, tight hamstrings to the back of your legs, or if you've got a tight back. So I'm going to show you a um, version of it that's supported, um, so it's more accessible and can be a little bit safer and takes a lot of the pressure off of your upper spine and off your neck, so it puts more of the weight across your whole back. I'm going to use a yoga bolster for this one. I'll demonstrate it with a yoga bolster, and then I've also um, taken a few uh, cushions off my sofa, and I'll show you what that looks like so you can see it as well. So I find the easiest way to get into this is to sit on whatever it is that you're going to use underneath your hips. Um, an added note, a benefit here if you have it is to take a strap because you can use that to do a bit more um, to stretch your legs with. So you're going to lie back and it kind of helps to sort of wiggle forward a little bit and then use your arms to kind of tip yourself back and just kind of ease your way down. And then once you're down to the floor, you can use your feet on the floor to kind of slide the bolster under your hips until you get it into the right spot and then take your feet off the floor. You want to find a position where you don't feel like your legs are falling or tipping forward. So if the bolster is too far underneath your back, you're going to find that you're having to like pull your legs in or hold them there. And you don't actually want to have to hold them. You kind of want gravity to do that. So I'm going to move the bolster a little bit further away from my shoulders, a little bit more underneath my buttocks. And to do that, you can either bring your knees towards you to take the weight off, or you can bring your feet to the floor and just scoot it forward just a little bit more. So you can kind of just wiggle till you get it into the right spot. Once you're there, try to keep, so notice here now the pressure is across my upper back and not so much on my neck. You can actually see that my neck's in a more neutral position. I'm not um, pressing down on the cervical spine. So depending on your flexibility, you might need to keep the knees bent. Um, and this could be enough, but you can experiment a little bit here. So once you're into this position, play a little bit around with the position of your legs. So you can bend your knees and let them come in towards you. You can straighten them up. You can try and bring one leg towards you. You can get a bigger stretch in the back of the leg. You can bring both legs towards you. You can keep the knees bent. You can take the legs wide out to the sides. You can bring the soles of the feet together. Um, favorite one, figure four position. So you cross your ankle onto your knee or thigh, and you can bring that leg in. You might not even need to hold on to it to get the stretch in your hip because gravity will hold your legs there. And if you have the strap, you can use the strap in the same way I've just discussed. So you can take the strap over one leg if you want and kind of pull it towards you, over both legs. Again, you might need to keep the knees bent. You can take the legs wide apart. You can bend the knees and pull them down. So you can experiment a little bit. Just be careful in this position. You want to feel like you've got your neck in a, a neutral position. And you want to feel like there's not an excessive amount of pressure on your upper body. You want your lower back to feel comfortable. And be careful when you um, put your legs down onto the floor. If you um, extend them out quite a bit, that weight is going to pull on your lower back and that could be uncomfortable as well. So to come out of this position, the easiest thing to do is kind of pull your legs towards you to take some of the weight off the bolster. And then you can just gently slide it out from underneath you so you can come down to your back. Take your time coming up from this position, so you might roll over, pause there for a minute, and then press your way up. Because it is a change in blood flow, so more flow is flowing to your head. You might find that when you come up, if you come up fast, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like on my sofa cushions, because a lot of us don't have bolsters at home. So I'll move that out of the way, move the strap out of the way. So I've taken two cushions from my sofa, literally. <laughs> I've taken two. Now this is, looks really tall when you look at it, but wait till I have a seat on it and then you can see the difference. So once you come to having a seat on the, the cushions, you can see that actually my hips have sunk down quite a lot. Again, I'm going to wiggle forward a little bit and use my hands and then my elbows to slowly tip back. And then I can bring my feet up onto the cushions. And this almost makes it easier to kind of just wiggle my hips back till I feel like they're in a comfortable place. And then the same options here. So again, you can see 
my hips are off the floor, maybe by about five centimeters. You know, I can get my hands underneath there and that's about it. And then again, you've got all the same options here. And again, to come out of the position, just take the weight of your legs towards you and just start to slide the cushions out from underneath you and push them away. And then you can roll over and push your way up. Just as a counter to this position, you may find that doing a twist really helps. So you can actually take the cushions, sit on top of them and use them to help you twist your back a little bit. And also just a little bit of arching. So grabbing onto your knees, pull forward, lifting up your chest and your chin, and then relax, letting your back round back a little, pull forward again, and just take a few rounds of that. So there's a more accessible version of plow pose. If you have any injuries in your back and your spine or your neck, I'd still skip this position because it does put a lot of pressure on your upper body and your spine and you have to wiggle around and move a lot and that's kind of a vulnerable place for your spine to be in as you're moving. So if you've got injuries, just give it a, give it a miss. You can find other tips and restorative yoga poses on my YouTube channel and on my website, megansetiyoga.co.nz.